Hi, and welcome back to today's video. Today we're exploring a powerful story of innovation, ambition, and decline. How the United States, once the undisputed leader in solar energy, slowly lost its grip on the industry to help create, and how China stepped in to claim the crown. This isn't just about tariffs or cheap labor, it's a deeper story about missed opportunities, lack of long-term vision, and what happens when China's bold industrial strategy meets short-term profit thinking of the USA. The modern solar cell was invented in 1954 by Bell Laboratories in New Jersey, a scientific breakthrough. The New York Times ran a headline saying it could usher in a new era, an era powered by the limitless energy of the sun. And for a while, that looked like it could happen in America. But fast forward to today, and China now controls over 90% of the world's solar polysilicon supply. This isn't just about manufacturing, it's about owning the foundation of the solar industry itself. So how did the US let go of its lead? And was China's rise inevitable, or was it enabled by American missteps? Everything starts with sand. Purify it to an almost unimaginable degree down to one impurity atom per 100 million, and you get polysilicon, the raw material for every solar panel on Earth. For decades, the US was at the center of this supply chain. The tiny town of Hemlock, Michigan, home to Hemlock Semiconductor, was once the world's largest producer of solar-grade polysilicon. If you have a smartphone or are using a laptop, chances are there's a bit of Hemlock in there. They also made about one third of the world's chip grade silicon. Hemlock Semiconductor was started in 1961, a joint venture between Dow Chemical and Corning. But by the 1980s, cracks were appearing. A US Department of Energy study in 1984 called it high cost aging facility. It needed investment. Instead, they sold a third of the company to Japanese investors. Then came the early 2000s. Solar demand was rising, oil prices were spiking, the world was waking up to climate change. But Hemlock's parent company, Dow Corning, was locked in years of bankruptcy protection due to lawsuits over silicon breast implants. So while the world was gearing up for a solar boom, Hemlock was unable to respond. And it wasn't just the lawsuits. Energy costs were killing them. Polysilicon production is incredibly electricity intensive. Hemlock became Michigan's largest energy consumer in a state with some of the highest industrial power prices in the US. They did try to expand, announcing billions in upgrades during the 2000s, but decision making was sluggish, with four different corporate boards needing to sign off strategic momentum just wasn't there. At that time, the entire global supply of polysilicon came from just 10 facilities owned by seven companies. It was a textbook oligopoly. They were running at capacity, keeping prices high and enjoying monopoly style profits. Hemlock executives even bragged about it in 2009. One Corning CFO called the business extraordinarily profitable. And that right there was the fatal flaw complacency. On the opposite side of the world, in China's Sichuan province, a different story was unfolding. Liu Hanyuan, a fish farmer turned entrepreneur and one of China's richest individuals, saw something that American firms didn't. Opportunity. In 2007, he invested $428 million in a new polysilicon facility in Lishan a city with cheap land, abundant labor, and crucially, dirt cheap hydroelectric power. Sichuan sits where Himalayan rivers crash down, feeding massive hydropower, including the Three Gorges Dam, the world's largest, creating abundant energy that keeps costs incredibly low. And Liu wasn't alone. As solar demand exploded, over 80 polysilicon manufacturers emerged across China, creating fierce competition and driving prices down. Then in 2008 came the financial crash. European nations pulled back on solar subsidies. Chinese firms dependent on exports were suddenly in trouble. Prices collapsed, 
Between 2011 and 2012 alone, prices fell over 70%. But Chinese firms hung on. The government didn't let the market wipe them out. Instead, they consolidated, improved and scaled. Meanwhile, back in the US, Hemlock and others were drowning. Orders evaporated, factories closed, Hemlock's expansion was cancelled. Sun Edison sold its Texas plant to a Chinese buyer and REC Silicon shut down its Washington plant. In 2011, Frank Asbeck, CEO of Germany's Solar World, filed a complaint with the US government. He accused China of dumping solar panels at below cost prices. The US agreed and in 2012 under the Obama administration, the Commerce Department slapped anti-dumping tariffs on Chinese panels of up to 250% to counter alleged subsidies. It was the start of the solar trade war. Trump ramped it up in 2018 with 30% tariffs on all imported solar panels, not just China's, aiming to protect domestic jobs. Biden kept the pressure on, extending tariffs and adding the Inflation Reduction Act in 2022 for US manufacturing incentives. Just this year, in 2025, there's a new investigation into imported polysilicon, potentially leading to more duties. But the reality is these tariffs haven't dethroned China. Why? Chinese firms adapted brilliantly, shifting production to Southeast Asian countries like Vietnam and Thailand to dodge the US tariffs. US imports of Chinese made panels actually rose in some years because the tech got cheaper and demand exploded. Meanwhile, China's home market boomed with incentives starting in 2011, absorbing overcapacity and fueling exports. Today, China produces 80% of global solar components and their panels are everywhere, powering the world's clean energy shift. So was China's rise unfair? Sure, subsidies played a role, but so did bold vision, cheap energy and relentless innovation, things the US oligopoly lacked. America invented solar, but complacency and high costs let it slip away. This wasn't a case of government propping up failure, it was China's entrepreneurs operating a predictable policy environment, building at scale. China hit back at the US tariffs. In 2012, they imposed 57% tariffs on US made polysilicon. That gave Chinese manufacturers room to breathe. For the US, it was game over. Hemlock quit the solar grade business in 2020. An entire industry, born in America, was now gone. Today, Tongwei produces over 480,000 tonnes of polysilicon annually. Hemlock, now re-entering the solar market, makes just 30,000. That's not even 7% of Tongwei's capacity. And it's not just scale. China builds end-to-end -end silicon. Wafers, cells, panels, systems, the whole value chain. So, why did China go all in? Well, because they had to. They don't have easy access to oil and gas. Solar isn't just clean energy, it's energy security. In the US, they are still drilling, but for China, the sun is their safest, most reliable power source. A former Hemlock president said it best. China really wanted the solar industry. We gave that away as a country. So there you have it, the fascinating story of how the US lost the solar race to China. The same has happened with batteries, EVs and many more industries. And it's the difference between long-term strategy of China over short-term profit of the US. Let me know what you think in the comments below. But for now, as always, from Shenzhen, take care.